So to those of you that have followed my channel for a while now, you may have seen a video that I made covering a driver called Santino Ferrucci. Since that video released, a lot has happened, not just in the motorsport world, but in the world as a whole. In the motorsport world, Mick Schumacher won the F2 title, Lewis Hamilton equaled Michael Schumacher's record of seven drivers' championships and 91 wins, but most importantly, my voice broke. But one other thing has happened since that video came out. Something that prepubescent me could never have predicted. A new, most hated driver in motorsport. With the hashtag we say no to Mazepin being seen on F1 Twitter more than news about the Red Bull second seat, it begs the question, why exactly do we say no to Nikita Mazepin? So in this slightly different style of video to my usual informational video, I wanted to give my own opinions as to what's made Haas's second 2021 Formula 1 driver one of, if not the most hated driver in motorsport right now. Firstly, I wanted to start off by wondering out loud, why is it always Haas? I mean, just take a look at what's happened to them in the last three years. Santino Ferrucci, Rich Energy, and now Nikita Mazepin. Of course, if you're not able to bring in the money by yourself in the way that a team such as Red Bull or Mercedes can, then naturally you have to resort to bringing in money by some other way. I'm sure you're all aware that Rich Energy made some bold promises for annual income, and with his immense financial backing, Nikita Mazepin will no doubt also bring in his fair share of Wonga. But let me ask you this, if you were promised to become a billionaire tomorrow, but everyone you meet would instantly hate you for the rest of your life, would you accept? This is basically the same situation that Haas face at the moment, which isn't that great, is it? To start the argument off, for a driver who finished only 6th in the standings in this year's Formula 2 season, you'd be right to be sceptical of Mazepin's raw talent as a racing driver, seeing as he was over 50 points behind his future teammate and this year's F2 champion, Mick Schumacher. And I mean, sure, there have been drivers who've joined F1 who hadn't yet proved themselves to be much good behind the wheel, but Mazepin is the first person in a fairly long time to have been so far out of reach of the F2 title. That having been said, Mazepin did score two wins in the season, which was more than Lando Norris managed to amass in his 2018 campaign. But the difference is that Norris isn't a knob. And while we're on the subject of generally being a dick to people, let's discuss some of the many reasons as to why he won't necessarily be a bad F1 driver in the on-track sense, but a bad F1 driver as in a bad person who also happens to race in the highest level of motorsport. Nowadays, F1 drivers are not only elite athletes, but also highly trained PR pets as well. They all have to behave like a good human being in front of the camera, and if they're not, well, that doesn't look so good, does it? Obviously, it's not that difficult to spot whether or not a driver is genuinely like what they say they're like in the interviews, but at least they all make some effort to appear friendly in front of the cameras, whether that is indeed the case or not. However, there is one exception to this rule, and who else would it be but Nikita Mazepin? I mean, just take a look at this interview, the guy speaking with all the emotion of a damp cardboard box. I would say that I like uh, Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso the most. So I would like to be like them in the future. Okay, okay, I know, English isn't his first language, so naturally he won't speak it perfectly, and I don't hold that against him, but plenty of other future Formula 1 drivers who don't speak English as their first language can still convey plenty of emotion in an interview. Okay, so Nikita Mazepin might not be the friendliest of drivers in an interview. Fair enough, but surely this isn't the reason why people so dislike him. Mazepin has spent almost the entirety of his career getting into disagreements with other drivers and people, right from his days in junior formulas. If I'm honest, I'm surprised he didn't pull a Luca Corberi during his carton days as well, given his behaviour in recent years. So what exactly has this human forehead done to upset so many people? Well, let's begin with his campaign in the European Formula 3 series. While his results weren't too bad on track, Mazepin certainly made more of a name for himself off track. Lewis Hamilton is another example of someone who makes just as big a name for themselves off track, except the key difference here is that Lewis Hamilton is trying to fight global issues such as racism and climate change, and Nikita Mazepin is just trying to fight other drivers. After free practice at the Hungaro ring round of the European Formula 3 Championship in 2016, Nikita Mazepin was furious for some reason, claiming that fellow driver Callum Eilot has got in his way while he was trying to set blistering lap times on new tyres, Mazepin was seeing red. And no, he hadn't just worn his helmet inside out. After a brief exchange of predictably kind words, Mazepin demonstrated for the first time in his career that he had emotions and hit Eilot. As I'm sure some of you will be aware, I'm a big fan of Callum Eilot, so of course I might be seeing this in a biased way, but I can't see any reason as to why whatever he did on track was worthy of a swollen jaw, several cuts on his face, and a black eye. Oh, and instead of apologising for the incident, Mazepin had to get his team to do it for him. Seriously, Nikita, you're not in charge of any massive company- Oh. Never mind. If this is the behaviour that we can expect from him in the F1 paddock, then I see no reason as to why we should let him in. 
but then again, if he's as violent as we think he is, he'll find a way. Moreover, Mazepin isn't famed for his clean driving on the track either. Yes, he might not have spent as much time in the walls as other drivers like Sean Galayle, but he's still actively putting other drivers in danger. Take the Sakir feature race, for example. Mazepin was weaving all over the circuit like a drunken truck driver, almost putting three drivers in the wall on three separate occasions in his bid to win the race. Which, by the way, he didn't. Despite not winning the race, Mazepin still managed to pick up some crucial points for the championship. Except, they were penalty points. Two of them, to be precise, which puts him ever closer to a race ban. As it stands, Mazepin's impressive collection of penalty points is going to be cleared the second he gets into the F1 paddock in pre-season testing, which I believe is wrong. Yes, every driver should get a fresh start when they move up to a new series, but it should be their championship points which get reset, not their penalty points. These points can be accumulated from karting all the way up to Formula 1 and serve as an accurate representation of a driver's demeanour, both on and off the track. If they just go away when a driver really needs to be on their game with things like this, they're essentially giving Mazepin an easy way out to avoid the things he's done in the past from catching up with him. So let's get to the final of my three main points for this video, and arguably the most high profile thing he's done since his birth. On the 9th of December 2020, Mazepin posted a frankly disgusting video to his Instagram account of him groping a female passenger in a car. Of course, the incident is supposedly being dealt with internally by a Haas F1 team under the advice of the FIA, so I hope for Haas's sake as well as everyone else's, that Mazepin doesn't keep his seat. For someone with so many eyes already on him, Mazepin should, more than anyone, have taken into account the severity of what he was about to do when he posted that video to his story. Yes, it's made worse because of his following. Yes, Mazepin apologised. Yes, the girl in question also released a statement, but the incident shouldn't be seen or treated in a different way because of his social status and financial backing. Oh, and let's just mention the two people's statements, shall we? Mazepin has recently deleted all of his tweets and removed the apology from his Instagram, although I don't follow him on principle, so I don't know if he's put it back up again or not. The poor girl also recently posted to her story, giving life advice to her past self. What did she say? She said, don't drink with assholes. And she also said, don't let anyone touch you or disrespect you again. I like the Haas F1 team. I like their livery. I like Gunter Steiner and I used to like both of its drivers. Now, I only like one of them.